Hey, Ben Aarons here. Today I'm going to talk to you about limbic system retraining exercises. What are they? How do they work? How do you do them? And what are the benefits? So you may have heard about limbic system retraining programs or brain retraining programs. And basically the core tenant here is that the limbic system is this region of the brain that's responsible for threat detection and response. And sometimes if you find yourself feeling consistently agitated or elevated or this sort of tired and wired type of experience where even though you might be physically tired or even exhausted, you feel like your brain, your mind just can't really let you rest, can't loosen its grip. Oftentimes what this may be the result from is something known as limbic system dysfunction. Essentially, it's a training effect. It's something that can happen when we become overloaded with multiple different sources of stress, maybe from the environment, and then maybe we get sick with an acute infection. And all of these different pieces coincide together to alert this part of our brain that there's this ongoing problem even after the problem has passed. This is where the sort of what's known as the training effect has taken place. So I'm not gonna go too deeply into how exactly these sorts of conditions form in this video. We'll have other videos on specific conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome and hypersensitivity disorders. But in this video, I wanna basically break down what is a neuroplasticity training exercise? What are some key characteristics or components of what makes good exercises versus not so useful exercises? And how can you start to reclaim your own brain and health through a series of relatively simple practices that anyone can implement on their own? So first and foremost, what is a limbic system? Well, we kind of already answered that by saying that the limbic system is this region of the midbrain, also known as the emotional brain, that's responsible for both threat detection and response. So why is that important, that it's both detection and response? Well, for every action, there's also a certain reaction. And the important thing to take away here is that when it comes to our body's unique responses, there are really two parts of the equation to focus on. The first is what we're exposed to, that's to say, what may be coming at us from the environment, but the second is how and why we respond to different things. One classic example of this is a common cold. If the virus that causes the common cold breezes through a room of 10 people, statistically speaking, three of them are likely to get sick and exhibit symptoms, while seven of them, roughly, would actually exhibit no immune response. The reason is bio-individuality, and it can be a lot of different factors at play, including, again, the total amount of stress a person might have been dealing with or accumulating over time, levels of toxicity, how much is going on in your mind. All of these may play a role in how your body responds to different things in the environment. So the core or the key of any neuroplasticity training exercise is ultimately to reestablish the brain as the chief orchestrator that can rebalance the bodily systems. So if you notice again that you may be stuck in this fight or flight response or the littlest thing has what seems like an outsized agitation effect on you, then it's possible that something called limbic kindling or conditioning may have taken place. Simply means that the brain learns from the past to protect us in the future. The good news is that the same way that the brain has learned in the past to overprotect us in some instances, it can actually be retrained deliberately and consciously through self-directed neuroplasticity exercises to return to a state of calm that we simply know as health and homeostasis. So what are the key characteristics of a good neuroplasticity exercise, or in this case, limbic retraining exercise? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to become aware of the current state that the body is in. If we're feeling overly agitated or if we're feeling calm, we want to become aware of what is that level of anxiety or agitation or discomfort in the system. Number two, we want some means of interrupting the pattern, right? So now that you've identified, okay, maybe I'm feeling a little bit agitated, maybe I have looping thoughts, maybe I'm feeling myself tense up in response to a certain symptom I'm having, the next step is to be able to interrupt this pattern. 
And there's a variety of different techniques ranging from NLP to somatic experiencing to even just putting a smile on your face, changing your rate of breath or shifting your posture, all of which can help to send a new message to that part of the brain called the limbic system. Essentially, what we're trying to do with brain retraining exercises are create new associations. The brain, particularly this limbic system, is a meaning-making machine. Again, it's always trying to protect you in the future from things that it learned in the past. So if in the past you learned that the stove is very hot when you touch it, it's going to learn by introducing this involuntary response that we know is the flinch response, whereby the next time you go to touch that stove or your arm gets close to it, whoop, you might instantly pull it back involuntarily. Now imagine for a moment though, if you develop that flinch response with respect to things that are not actually threatening, benign, right? And this is something that can actually happen during times of great stress. We might develop sensitivities and heightened arousal to ordinary foods or chemicals in the environment or certain smells or electromagnetic fields. And then we think that these fields or these scents or these chemicals are the things to blame. And it's not one or the other. It's not black or white. It's not all the way that it's only the environment. And it's certainly not all the way that it's only the limbic system's interpretation of the environment. Both of them are at play once this conditioning effect or this learning has taken place. Here's where the key and the neuroplasticity exercises come into play, is that the aim of these exercises is to desensitize the nervous system and the brain to things that we should be able to handle, that we would be better off handling in the environment because perhaps we're surrounded by them or perhaps we just live in a busy world where we need our full faculties, we need to be able to achieve health, happiness, harmony, and homeostasis, even amid some of these things that may be currently throwing us for a loop. So in this instance, this is where we want to employ some of these neuroplasticity exercises or perhaps join a neuroplasticity training program like the one that Reorigin offers called You Again. And this is where we go about a process of systematic desensitization or gradual exposure, whereby we strategically and very mindfully start to introduce the very things that are actually triggering symptoms, but we do it in the context of these certain exercises and techniques that teach the brain a new association that actually allow us to stay calm and remain comfortable even amid the discomfort. And the more we can train ourselves to relax into the stress, to relax into the discomfort, the more we're actually sending a new message back to the limbic system. We're redirecting the brain and reclassifying these sensory stimuli that have once been classified as threats to now something that is benign. And the result can be quite profound. The result is that we maintain and improve the ability to maintain this sense of inner peace, joy, restfulness, and even calm the immune system and the inflammatory responses with respect to things that may currently be triggering us. So if this is something that resonates with you, if this sounds interesting to you, if you wanna learn more about neuroplasticity training or these limbic type of retraining exercises, I recommend joining us at a Reorigin info call, which you can learn more about on our website at re-origin.com. There you can join a live call, get all of your questions answered, learn more about the program, and see if it's a right fit for you. Do you have any experience with limbic retraining exercises? Any improvements that you've noticed? Please feel free to share those in the comments below. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.